So today we're talking about the use of runoff, runoff risk advisory tools for water quality protection and how this topic came about in the joint research um, that project that is coming together to provide more information on these tools is that kind of when you look at what causes a runoff event, for instance, and you look at um, you know, what factors really lead to that, number one is that you need some type of pollutant availability, if you will. So you have either applied manure or fertilizer to a field and there's some uh, discrepancy there. In other words, that the crop needs aren't quite matching up yet. There's variable uptake and or conversion. In some respect, it's available or it's fresh, it's just put out there. And then the second piece is that something about that application had to be improper. Something wasn't being followed in the four R's of nutrient management. In other words, maybe the timing was a little bit off on application. Maybe the source to use Gall manures when maybe liquid manures would have been more appropriate or fertilizer. The rate was a little too high. The placement wasn't right following setbacks and other variabilities. Or maybe the method of application you should have done incorporation when there was surface application, for instance. And then you need some type of a catalyst. Typically, this is a weather event. Precipitation is our number one and most common a uh, weather event that can move uh, nutrients from the surface uh, to a water source. Flooding, wind, snow, all of these different factors can encourage a runoff pollution event. And then lastly, typically something associated with poor field conditions, even if the weather event is an extreme, if you've got a significant slope or there's no surface cover, saturated soils, frozen ground, et cetera, um, the soil type isn't appropriate for the application practices, you may also encourage that. So thinking through all of these factors together, we needed something to help producers, uh, landowners, applicators figure out when is manure, fertilizer, or nutrient application appropriate and when is it not. And there's a few different tools available to look at this. One, and we're going to hear about all four of these today. One is the application risk management system uh, that was created out of Washington that is a real-time manure spreading uh, advisory along with the field worksheet. The runoff risk advisory forecast created out of Wisconsin. It's a decision support tool very similar that is a runoff um, kind of visual advisory giving information on timing. The fertilizer forecaster uh, developed out of Pennsylvania, still under development. This is also a decision support tool for determining when nutrient management um, opportunities that identify the relevant, relative probability of runoff or infiltration events, how those things correlate. And lastly, the saturated area forecast tool created out of Virginia that's based on the SWOT model framework that uses terrain-based metrics to look at, identify, runoff generation and soil moisture. So all four of these tools are trying to get different aspects of how do we reduce runoff, how do we provide information to producers, landowners, and applicators so that they can limit those issues. So we all came together and uh, with a CIG grant entitled Demonstration and Implementation of a Nutrient Management Risk Advisory System for Protection of Water Quality in Runoff-Prone Climates. Um, all of us came together to see if we can combine or um, use the best parts of all of our tools together to provide a platform for national adoption of some type of a runoff advisory tool. And you can see the list of project partners. It's quite a lot of folks who are all participating in this project in various ways. And we're hoping by September 2018 that we've got something um, to get out and show what's going on. And just so you know, some of the objectives of this larger project are to quantitatively and qualitatively compare the existing runoff advisory tools for their strengths, limitations, and integration together, to coordinate those efforts to develop a runoff risk advisory system interface that can be adapted and implemented to applicable regions of the US, developing a supporting educational documents and framework to support adoption and implementation of that advisory system. And lastly, hopefully to transfer those tools and that platform out to applicable areas of the US. 
So please look for this in the future. If today, if these advisory tools, if this, you don't have something in your area already and you're really interested in that, feel free to get a hold of any of us so that we can keep you on the list, but you'll see more information about this project come out in the future. And if you do want to see more on the tools presented today and a couple others, we put together a comparative paper. Um, Zach Easton was our primary author on that that was published in Journal of Environmental Quality just recently. You can get the online version. Journal date is pending in a special issue, but just so you know. So to talk um, about the first tool today, I'm going to discuss the Washington tool, which is a, a runoff advisory system. Uh, we call it the ARM, or Application Risk Management System for Water Quality Improvement. So just to give you a quick little idea about our area and see how it compares to your own, um, Whatcom County, which is what's shown on the map here, is the northwesternmost county in Washington State, above Seattle and just south of the border here. You can see that on the line on the map here. And the points I just want to uh, put across here is you see the blue lines on here. Those are our major uh, surface waters. And there's a lot of little tributaries going into that. And all of these, we've got a lot of different land uses here. We've got a big aquifer in this area. Uh, we've got um, dairy and livestock, uh, crops, berries are some of our major land, user, land uses. And at the mouth of all of this water, we've got a lot of shellfish production. We've got salmon that come up river and spawn. And we, of course, have natural resources. So we've got a lot going on in this area. And our primary average monthly precip, you can see that the majority, or 75% of that rainfall, falls between about the beginning of October till what feels like now. It feels like we don't get summer till July, but uh, till about mid-April. And during that time, if we look at when manure application, which is our primary use as well as fertilizer in some of the early season for uh, crops and berries, is a lot of that happens about 65% during that majority annual rainfall period. So what this sets up is the potential to have really big runoff events that will carry manure nutrients and fertilizer nutrients into our water courses. And our monthly sampling in this area shows that yes, that actually does occur and it is and can be a really big issue. So we needed some type of a tool that went along with our static nutrient management plans, a dynamic decision support tool that producers could look at that morning or the day before and say, should I be out tomorrow applying or should I not? When can I schedule this ahead? So we looked at that in our five steps of manure application would be to first calculate agronomic rate, know how much you need to get out there, identify those optimal fields using risk maps that we create for people, determine when to apply, this is the use of that manure spreading advisory that I'll show you, assessing field conditions that even if the forecast looks good, your field may not, and vice versa, to look at an application risk management worksheet, and lastly, to apply and monitor your field uh, with seasonal manure setbacks. And it's Step three and four that I'm going to really go over today that is the use of this tool that was developed in our subject of today's webinar. So the manure spreading advisory, we started by creating it just in our little segment of Whatcom County, which you can see over here on the right side of this map. And then we decided, well, all of Western Washington would probably be um, useful. We all have a very similar climate, a lot of seasonal rainfall, very dry summers. and then. Oregon asked for, hey, can you guys kind of bring that down south to us and help us? And then up in BC, hey, can you also just um, revise that and get it up in that area? So you'll see it for these three regions. And, um, and it's kind of, you see all the links here that you can access on the recorded version of this. And uh, use those if you're in one of those states. So how this looks, and I'll show you our Washington version here, is that this is a real-time runoff advisory. It provides a three-day risk forecast. In our area, the forecast uh, precipitation base outside of that becomes um, not very accurate. And so we wanted to ensure that we were catching a window, which about three days is pretty appropriate for any type of land application. And then when our risk is still very high after that, um, that window seemed pretty appropriate. And if we went beyond that, we felt like the uncertainty is very high, the accuracy is a bit low, and people didn't trust it or use it. So this was a good time frame for us. 
auto-updated forecast from NOAA every day uh, so that this is automatically doing its thing. And this is a decision-making tool. So producers can use this, look at it, and decide, should I go out, should I not? It's not a regulatory tool. It's just a decision support tool. Color-coded for easy use, kind of the stoplight method. Green means go, red means no. Uh, and this has a link to the ARM worksheet for our field risk assessment. You can access this if you want to go check it out later at wadairyplane.org slash MSA. And when someone accesses the map, they'll go to it, zoom into their location, click on it, and get this pop-up, which will have a couple extra informational pieces like seasonal setback distances, uh, the current runoff advisory, you'll see that here in three days, the precipitation forecast in 24-hour and 72-hour blocks, and then a link to the field risk assessment worksheet. And one thing that we also did on here, why we have some of this information extra, is that it also fulfills record keeping requirements that landowners and producers are required to do. So we felt like that was really nice to have some extra pieces for people in there to ensure that they're getting everything they need. So the worksheet, um, this is filled out before application, and this was a way that we could provide a runoff risk advisory by field and day. The other one, as you saw, were kind of large isoplaster areas that were based on precip forecast, and this was the best way for us to get down to a very low specific level. It also affords some record keeping and accountability for folks, which is also great. Um, and it is based on four years of research that we did to look at, you know, what parameters should be in here, what are the thresholds that would create low, medium, high risk, et cetera. And then at the end, the combination of all those points, if you will, how does that produce a low, high, or medium risk, et cetera. And we did make sure that this was mobile friendly so people could do it right on their phones and email it to themselves or save it on their home computers if they're there. So just so you can see what parameters are in here, and you're welcome to go through this on your own if you want to just see how it works and what it looks like. Uh, the biggest things that we captured were, of course, the precipitation, which autofills right from that manure spreading advisory. Their soil type, this has a very significant impact on soil moisture and water holding capacity. Of course, the soil moisture itself, water table depth, forage density, so that we know is this a bare field, do we have a nice stand of grass, what is that increased risk of water movement, forage height correlates to that. Field surface condi condition, this is a way for us to say, is anything you know, flooding, frozen, snow covered, which would all be no's for application according to the NRCS 590. Is there ponding or tiles present? And anytime anyone clicks any of these buttons, they will get a individual risk rating for that parameter, as well as some kind of information, a caution, a little extra info, uh, et cetera. And then manure application equipment, this helps us understand a little bit better for that placement piece of the four R's. And lastly, a water body or critical area. As they fill that out, this overall risk is gonna change. If this comes out high, um, this is just saying it's really recommended you do not apply. Highly, highly recommended. But of course, in the end, this is a decision support tool, and folks will do what they do. If it's low, again, just because it's as low, um, if they have poor application practices, they can have an issue. So again, it's in that parameters. And then they can um, save or send this. All of the parameters that are in there are supported with guidance and tools on our website that we have available for people. Again, that Washington or wadairyplan.org site so that producers always have information. And we do a lot of trainings and educational events annually to help people understand this and remind them what's going on in here, which was an important part of the learning piece. So overall, um, we found uh, that with the release of these tools to a large audience over the last year and a half or so, we've seen a very significant increase in the use every month. We're seeing that, which is awesome, that these tools are being promoted by our state regulatory agencies, not as a regulatory tool, but as a really good thing for producers and uh, land applicators and agriculturalists to be able to use tribes, the livestock industry, all of our really big stakeholders are really supportive of this tool, which is great. 
Um, as mentioned, we pair education events on teaching people how to properly use this. The first time when you looked at that worksheet and all the parameters, it was a little daunting. It looked like a lot of stuff. But the more we can help people through, the more they're um, applicable or, or more likely to use it. And lastly, as I mentioned, it, there's an accountability and record keeping for our state regulations. We made sure that we try to do a, a one-stop shopping, if you will. The, if they filled this out, they fulfilled a lot of that, so they don't have to fill the same information out in three or four different places. And we're improving the tool all the time. We're actually currently in the process of updating and revising it. And as I mentioned, uh, with all the tools you're seeing here today, we're trying to figure out a way to kind of blend some of our best pieces and improve all of our individual tools or combine some of them in the future. So we'll see how that goes. 